Hey everyone, welcome back to Lavender. It's Eileen. So one of my favorite parts of creating your dream life is having financial freedom and creating financial abundance. That means having enough money so that you don't have to worry or stress about how you're going to pay your bills. Having more than enough money so that you could live comfortably and happily. To make it super simple, two ways to have more money is one, make more money or two, save more money. So today I've partnered up with eBase to share 15 ways that you can save more money in your life. So let's start with number one use cash instead of credit cards. We live in a digital culture where it's so easy to swipe your credit cards, buy something online, even pay your friends back using your phone that we sometimes don't realize how much we are spending. It just looks like a random number and you're like, okay, click, click, click. It's super easy. So using cash instead of using your credit card will help you realize how much you're spending. And when you see that amount of money in cash, it just seems like so much more money because of the physical paper it just feels more substantial and more real so also when you use cash you're spending money that you already have and when you use credit cards you're kind of using borrowed money like money that you don't have to pay at that moment and that can be very dangerous making you spend more than you actually have and you can go down that slippery slope of getting into credit card debt which is the worst type of debt to be in because it's so high interest and you're just going to be paying so much extra money that it just does not make sense it's not smart pay your full credit card bills off you guys number two write down all of your spending all of your expenses on paper take time to look at your past transactions and really keep track of how much you're spending see where your money's going how much are you spending on food how much are you spending on Amazon or groceries it can surprise you and this is your chance to bring awareness to this area so that you can see where you can start to cut back from there, you can start to set new budgets for yourself and kind of make it like a game, like see if you could spend like $100 less on food this month or on whatever categories that you think you might be overspending in. This brings me to my next point, which is cancel any unnecessary subscriptions. So you just might be subscribed to something that you don't realize you're subscribed to or something that you don't use anymore that you can technically cancel or put on hold. For example, I realized I haven't shopped on Thrive Market as much anymore, so I'm planning on canceling that annual subscription. And I also use Audible, but because I've collected so many credits for audiobooks over time, I realized that I could actually downgrade my plan into paying every other month for an audiobook versus every month. So that suits me better and it saves me money. Number four, always Google a coupon code. I can't tell you how many times I've saved money using this trick. I never check out without Googling for a special promo code first because I just know that there are so many promos and coupon codes out there. So for example, there was this YouTube convention last year that was pretty pricey. So say the convention was like $400 to attend. I was about to pay that $400 to attend that event, but instead I was like, hmm, let me Google Google this and see if there's any like coupon codes out there. So I ended up finding this guy who was speaking at that event and he turned out to have like a special code for his followers. So I just took that code, inputted it, and my ticket came out to be half the price. So I saved $200 just by a quick Google search. Tip number five is to use Ebates to get cash back on your purchases. You can actually get up to 15% cash back when you shop online through Ebates. If you haven't heard of Ebates, it's the largest cash back site which partners with over 2,500 of the biggest name brands like Sephora, Amazon, Adidas, Urban Outfitters, even Coursera to bring you cash back coupons and promo codes all for free. I've been using Ebates since 2015. I love that it rewards you for shopping at places that you would normally already shop at. So it's kind of a no-brainer to use. It feels like free money. So using Ebates is super easy. I personally like to use the Google Chrome extension so that whenever I'm doing some online shopping, then there will be a pop-up letting me know if that shop has Ebates cash back. So there's just a button that says activate cash back. You click it and you're good to go. You can also get cash back by shopping through the Ebates website. So when you go on the website, there are tons of brands. You just click 
through it and then you'll be on the road to getting cash back that way as well. If you want to sign up for Ebates, you can click that first link in my description box for a $10 welcome bonus after you join for free and there's also a giveaway. So click that second link if you want to enter my $100 Visa gift card giveaway co-sponsored by Ebates. So you must be an Ebates member and subscribe to my channel to enter. But it's free money, how exciting, right? <laughs> Now for the sixth way to save more money. Start building an emergency fund. So an emergency fund is a sum of money that is about three to six months worth of your expenses. So calculate your average monthly expenses and times that by three to six. It just depends on whatever number makes you feel good, whatever number lets you sleep at night. That is your emergency fund to dip into whenever there is an emergency. So the way you start building this is to make a plan to start like setting deposits to that emergency fund. So you can make this automatic or it doesn't have to be automatic. Start to consciously think of ways to save that money and then actively transfer it to your emergency fund. Trust me, once you start thinking about it, the ideas will come and before you know it, you'll be on your way to building that emergency fund safety net and you'll be good to go. Number seven, schedule your shopping allowance. So this is a way to limit your shopping habits. So instead of shopping whenever you feel like it or whenever you're bored, set like a schedule for your shopping, like allow yourself to buy clothes once every other month or once every three months, maybe every quarter when there's a new season, that's like your opportunity to start shopping. Whatever, you make up the rules that work for you. What you can do is start adding items to your shopping list. Just use any list making app and write down things that you wanna buy like as you think of them. Don't buy them right then. Just like put them on your list like, oh, I need new socks or I need a new blender. So put these all on your list and then schedule a day in your calendar to let yourself shop. So that will help control any impulse buying and it will help you be a more calculated and a more planned out shopper. Number eight, wait it out. So if you don't like the previous tip on scheduling your shopping allowance, you can also apply this tip to wait it out. Give yourself 14 to 30 days after you want to buy something to actually buy it. So this also helps curb that shopping impulse so you don't do any impulsive shopping. So when you want to buy something, say you want to buy a new camera or a new laptop, really sit on it, like don't buy it immediately, take your time, I would say 14 to 30 days, and then after those days, if you still feel like you wanna buy it, then make your purchase. That way you'll make more informed and smart choices. Number nine, only buy what you really need and what you'll really use. So I kind of wanna counteract the popular belief that shopping in bulk is a way to save more money. Yes, in some cases it is, but I see a lot of people kind of go overboard with it. People who like to save money like to buy bulk everything. Like let me buy like 20 paper towels or like all of this toilet paper or all of these hand creams, all of these bananas just because they're on sale. And yes, it might be cheaper per piece, but really think about what you're gonna use and what you really need. Because if it's like food, for example, I've seen people go crazy with buying a lot of food, but the food will eventually expire and you might not eat it all even though it was cheap. I've seen my friends buy a lot of hand creams because they're all on sale and then they think that they're gonna keep using those hand creams forever but they just forget about them and they become storage and clutter. So really think about buying what you'll really need, what you'll really use. Reconsider buying too many things at once. I just don't think that you always save that much money. Plus it's just better for like managing your things. Number 10, use your public library. This is something that I am looking forward to explore more because when I was growing up, my mom would take us to the library every week and we used to like check out books and I really enjoyed that experience. And when I grew older, I kind of forgot that that public resource was available to us. I forgot that I could get a library card and check out books without having to buy them on Amazon or Audible and that can actually save a lot of money. Books can get expensive, especially if you like reading. So consider finding your local library, see if you could get a library card because most libraries have all the books that you'd want to read and libraries also have like DVDs, movies, audio books, audio tapes. They got more than you think. 
Number 11, plan your meals around grocery store sales. This was a tip I picked up from a friend recently and I just never thought about it before. If you look at your local grocery store, they always have certain items on sale. Maybe you can find like the coupons that you get in the mail and plan your meals around what's on sale. So my friends invited us over for dinner. They cooked this steak and it was like a huge steak that they got like for $6.99 a pound, which if you were to order that at a restaurant, it'd be like $50, $60 and it was because that steak was on sale and they shopped based on what was on sale and then they're like oh yeah come over next time and then we asked like oh what should we cook and they're like I don't know whatever's on sale that week so I was like oh that's actually pretty smart and that's a tip that I think you guys could start trying out and let me know how it goes Number 12, buy used instead of new. This is a common tip, but I think there are a lot of like used things that we don't typically realize is used. For example, if you look on like Poshmark, there's a lot of makeup palettes and things like that that aren't really used. They're just opened and the people don't use them. So they resell them on Poshmark for a lot cheaper. I personally have also bought things new and realized I didn't like it or I didn't need it, but I wasn't able to return it. So I just sold it on on Poshmark for a lot cheaper than I got it and it was better for both parties because it's new but it's cheap to the customer and I didn't need it anymore and I still made some of my money back. So whether you're on either end of that spectrum, you can definitely save money by buying used or selling something that you don't use anymore. Number 13, make your own versus buying. So DIY whatever you can. Usually DIY does save you money. In some cases you like spend more money trying to DIY things, but just to put it super simply, like cooking at home, making your own food versus buying your own food. Making your own clothes if you're so um, talented at sewing versus buying clothes. Making whatever you think you can. Personally for me, I like making hand soaps, cleaner sprays, things with essential oils. That's because I'm like more comfortable with that realm, but I've definitely made clothes for myself. I've definitely made just a lot of random DIYs, like artwork I've DIYed. So there's a lot of ways you can get creative if you're willing to put in the work yourself. Number 14, learn to cut or do your own hair. So you can save a lot of money from going to the hair salon by just like cutting your own hair, whether it's trimming your own bangs or doing like a full chop. There are so many YouTube videos teaching you how to cut your hair, how to layer it evenly. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can always ask a friend to help do it for you. Personally, for the past four or five years, I've dyed my own hair. I would bleach it, I would tone it, put color in it. So I learned all of that myself just through looking up hair forums and YouTube tutorials. This is like my first year of like letting someone else do my hair because I'm luckily more financially abundant. I can pay for someone to do my hair so I don't have to mess up my own hair. But for a good amount of years, I was doing it myself and saving so much money. I still tone my own hair and color my own hair too. The only thing I get done is the bleach because that's tough to do yourself, like in the back. So for example, toning my hair at home costs about $10, just using the products that I could buy off Amazon. Toning my hair at a hair salon costs $100. So you can see how much money I save just by toning my hair myself. So I cut my bangs myself, I tone and color it, I still do a lot of those things myself. My last tip for today is to get social and swap with a friend, whether you wanna swap clothing, swap books, swap, I don't know, a vacuum, cleaning supplies, whatever you can swap, lend out, borrow, do that with a friend so that you don't have to buy everything for yourself. You can save so much money by sharing items that you don't normally use every single day. That could also be a great opportunity to bond with a friend and get to know them on a deeper level because you're like sharing the same things, always calling each other up, sharing your styles. It could be so much fun. All right, I hope you like this video on 15 ways to save more money. Definitely, definitely share your tips on how to save money down below in the comments. I want to learn new tricks, new tips and strategies to save money, so feel free to share. I will see you guys next time, and don't forget to click the link down below to try out Ebates and also enter that giveaway for the $100 Visa gift card. I love you guys so much. See you next time, bye. Mm -hmm.